Hello and welcome to another episode of The Aftermath. My name is Ian, and as always, I'm joined by Dylan. Hey, how's it going? Man, you really, you really know how to take a take a man on his on a on a bad day. Yeah, so and really, with this one. Really beat him down, huh? The UFO meter is off the charts with this one. Oh man, <laughs> it's uh, I have. I always do this. Let's yeah. start off by saying. We watched uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt December Sky. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, dude. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I can say, like, right off the bat, I don't think I've ever, um, I don't think I've ever single handedly throughout watching a film. I mean, be, I mean, time after time, right. have I sat there and gone, "Ooh, yeah, we've, we've seen some messed up stuff." <sighs> I, I just like it, I felt like it was like one after the next, right? right when one was done, it's rapid fire. Yeah, I start was, setting up it was for the another, next one, and I was like, "Oh man, I just, ooh, mm-hmm. um, I I don't even know, um." I believe I said this on an episode, I, and I don't remember which one. Mm-hmm. Um, it is hard. Oh, you know what it was? I, I believe it was The Last Samurai. Oh, yeah. It is hard sometimes to quantify the human emotion mm-hmm. or it's sometimes like very complex emotions, I feel like, for me in so many words. Yeah. <laughs> um, And some movies really capture heavy emotions like that and really can convey it really well. Oh, yeah. But a lot of times it's kind of hard to talk about oh, and course. hard to put into words. Uh, the, the, this movie more often than not is just going to leave you sitting there like, wow. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this uh, this movie, um, it, um, it is chopped full mm. of, of those kind of moments of like and full of chops yeah you, oh, wow <laughs> too, too soon buddy it is okay you know it is it's hard to to sometimes put into words um what some people may be feeling mm. in certain moments of this film yeah again is is this uh um like a series that is like a like a culmination in a movie kind of thing. It started off as a very short OVA series. Okay. Adapted from a, a manga that is ongoing. Okay. And later on they decided to compile everything into a movie. Wow. And then they made a second movie. Yes. Which is super good. We actually kind of watched it out of order. I, I believe yeah. I've I've seen a majority of this first one called December right. Sky. We had touched on Thunderbolt a while back, but never really continued and, it. And it's been a while. It has. It's been a long time. Oh yeah. But and I um and I think I fell in love with it more now, mm-hmm. knowing the full scope of everything. Right. Um kind of like my, how my love for Godzilla has really oh, kind of yeah. like blossomed of into something much bigger than it actually is mm-hmm. because of all these like little tidbits and in, in this ever growing universe uh, i think mm-hmm. it's really cool oh uh, yeah the same thing happens with with tidbits like this in gundam oh yeah i have slowly but surely uh you and me have chipped away at the mm-hmm. the uh, very uh uh big selection of uh, gundam and there's still and there's so, so much, much more still so much more um but I, I really am falling in love with so many unique series and so many characters. and Oh, yeah. It, I, I just love the medium of storytelling in this universe in a certain way like I never would have thought that I would. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> and this, uh, Thunderbolt, especially, specifically... It's this, one of the best. This first one, um, I've never quite watched a Gundam series mm-hmm. that has felt so real. Yeah. If you thought 8th MS team was like mm-hmm. the nitty gritty, and it is, to mm-hmm. be fair, but there's mm-hmm. still that lighthearted element that a lot of, I guess, earlier Gundam series yeah. have. 
despite the, the, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, right, the material right. that's kind of gung ho attitude. Right. It's just it's a little family and a war. yeah, but no, Mm-mm. no. In this series, everybody is out to get each other. Doesn't care for anybody else but themselves. It feels like, yeah. Aside from like these scant few people that you can pick out. Yeah, but they're nitpicks, <laughs> it, it, right? It, it, um, I think whenever I say it feels real, mm-hmm. I think I mean more so in th- uh, the morality of both sides. Oh yeah, how there there are there are decent people on both sides, mm-hmm. just trying to make ends meet, kind of yeah. thing. Caught it, up in this awful war, right? Right, doing things that they. Would never have done otherwise. Yeah, right, except for these very particular circumstances. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I think feels like authentic about it, is yeah. that it feels like, you're right, there is no... Uh, this uh, December Sky specifically um, uh, culminates that feeling that I've talked about so many times when we talk about Gundam mm-hmm. shows and movies and things yeah. is that there's no real good and bad guy. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just, uh, you know, at war. Or they're at war and there are good and bad people on both sides that, that, right. that help push agendas that seem messed up or, or what have you. Oh yeah. And this really, I mean, this really just hits that nail right on the head mm-hmm. of like, there are, <laughs> there are, there are, there are bad people here there are some people that are doing some really um messed up things oh yeah borderline psychopaths right 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 um i i don't want to make it too too real Mm -hmm. but it almost feels like there are some uh there are some bad characters that remind me of some figures in real life really yeah, like the doctors that are like mutilating oh, these, yeah. or, or that are treating like, their patients like lab rats, right? L- like how, like, kind of like World War Two stuff. Mm-hmm. How like that people were in certain points in time in history when they were just like, ah, oh, yeah, they're just kind of you know, right. <laughs> they're getting tested on you yeah. know, or they're being you know, I wonder what this will do, right? Right, or they're you <laughs> know, uh, especially in like Japan during you know certain points in time yeah. in history and stuff. So, mm-hmm. anyways. Rough stuff. Not to get too heavy with it, but it just, like I said, you you see these characters, these, like, scientists that are, like, doing a job, Mm -hmm. big quotes around that. Right. Um, And it... And it, it it's like masked, like they're they're trying to do something mm-hmm. good for these like um, uh, these uh, injured warriors, right? Crippled veterans, crippled veterans, um, who are like, down a few limbs. Yeah, and it but it has this facade of doing something good, right? Like they're to, called the Living Dead Division, right? Right. How morbid, you're right? Could that name be? You're right. It is. Yeah. <laughs> They're supposed to see this as a second chance to keep, like, contributing to yeah. their home. And they're <laughs> part of the living dead division. <sighs> but but as I was saying, it just kind of feels, once you, like, peel back that first layer, it really feels like a facade. Like, there's oh, yeah. this, like, seedy Definitely. underbelly of, like, oh man, this is Nothing just... but a bunch of guinea pigs. Yeah, they're just really trying their best to... The one line that gets me is... After after one of the guys gets gets shot mm-hmm. and they recover his body and bring him back, apparently in his prosthetic arm they're able to store some data or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as they're wheeling him back in, his his fellow crewmates are like, "Can you believe we found him? Like we almost didn't get him because again, yeah, we'd was, like to return him to his family if we can." Uh, right? He was like, like "No, nah, we got to get that data first. Uh, right? And then of course he's like. Hey now, man! You're kind of talking about him like he's he's property, basically. Right. And he's like, "Well, I mean, <laughs> if the it, info we get from his corpse is gonna keep you fighting out oh, there, right? It's, just so you know, it, right? And it's like it's things like that where it's right. like it's like he's a he's dead, but man. he's a <laughs> but he's a he's a human being. With, he was alive just with, a few minutes yeah, right, ago, right? And so it's that kind of thing where it's like there is this this tone of like, yeah. We're giving you guys a second the lines chance. Are thin. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's a thin veil, mm-hmm. 
and it's very, several have been yeah, crossed yeah. already. <laughs> right, and it is not hard to just disrupt and move around and go. Mm, this is a yeah. little shitty, <laughs> I mm. think. Um, you see, you'd think you'd start to recognize that you uh, may have gone a bit overboard when there is a colony-sized hole in a one of the continents of the Earth. <laughs> oh yeah. No, no, no. Nah, that's not too far. It's for the sake of independence. It's only too far when we do it two times. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which one are we talking yeah, yeah. about? Here? Is it the third or fourth one? Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Mm. <sighs> yeah. So, so anyways, that's a little inside joke for those of right. you guys who know, who know what we're talking about here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, basically, uh, like, I, like I was saying, there, there are a lot of heavy emotions. There are, mm. you know, uh, comrades getting killed and, yeah. and uh, there are some of the comrades don't feel like throwaway characters sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like they, they are kind of side characters, but a lot of their deaths are kind of visceral. Oh, and yeah. Like it just, um, the, the art style is like mm-hmm. those kind of, it kind of feels, um, it feels like if you take Gundam, that art style, and then mm. you take like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I was just gonna you, say it's like you mix right, right. the shading a bit, right, right. But but like but just imagine like we're in the setting of Gundam, and like you really tone down the kind of like wily aspect mm. of like there are no stands, it, it, right, right. Well, I'm talking like I'm talking about like <laughs> like vivid colors right, and right. like you know like really crazy aesthetics, mm-hmm. but, but like the overall no like, posing, it, right, right, right. The <laughs> overall. Um, the line work, the shading, the like in- intensity of mm-hmm. things, like that kind of stuff. It's similar that really comes through, and it kind of feels that way. Like I've seen multiple uh, times in in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure oh, yeah. before, um, and it's really cool. I'm it's really a- hoping you come around to that. By the way, I really want to watch that <sighs> show with you, dude. Uh, maybe it, just, <laughs> it feels a little too bizarre for me. I know, I know. Uh, maybe <laughs> maybe it, it, it maybe. got it in the it, title it, for no reason. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're, you're not right. wrong. Um, uh, but I think it's it is a is a fresh take mm. on the Gundam like look. Oh, definitely. And so like it it looks different. It kind of feels different. Mm-hmm. And and again, and we're dealing with like some some really heavy stuff. So oh yeah. So it feel like the the point that I'm saying is kind of like how we've talked about in the past. Like Gunbuster has like a like an art style and a feel, and mm-hmm. all these other like animes have these like different looks and aesthetics yeah this one's a slap to the face this one like it, it changes the look it it, it keeps it in the same <laughs> universe a gun to your head. <laughs> right literally yeah. um but like i would i think the the point that i'm trying to get across is like this kind of a new stylistic approach kind of fits because we're dealing with like like the tone's different mm-hmm. we're not talking about the same like happy-go-lucky right you know quote unquote yeah, yeah, yeah right 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 comparatively no, happy-go-lucky yeah, right. there's no rights daycare right there's no young children that are gonna go yeah you're gonna go save the day right. but we'll get we'll get there mm-hmm. um <laughs> <laughs> oh god but it's like it, it, it's like uh I don't know. It's 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 like a, it's a breath of fresh air for mm-hmm. this series. I feel like because it, it's something new and different, but oh, it's still yeah. in the same universe that I love, and I, I think it's really cool, and I love it. Right. Um, I we kind of watch these out of order, and I don't want to talk too much on mm. what is it called again? Bandit flower. Bandit flower. Mm. <laughs> I almost. <go. laughs> um, Bandit flower. Uh, is like is the um the sequel. Yes, to December Sky is uh, is the a new hope to Rogue One, <laughs> if <laughs> right. you will. Like the oh, kind of the kind of yeah. like that transition, like mm-hmm. is real smooth between yeah. the end of December Sky and the beginning of uh, Band of Flower. Mm-hmm. And we w- just watched Band of Flower, and I fell in <laughs> love with it. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I don't want to harp on that too long because I it, maybe right, right, one right. day we'll talk about that specifically. Oh yeah, yeah. But having just come off the heels of that and like retouching on what happens before it. You said it. That shit hurt you it. said it. You said it right off the bat, mm-hmm. and I was thinking it, and you took the words right yep. out of my mouth. Yep. You were like, "This feels a lot darker than the second yeah. one because it, it is. Because it is. It is so depressing. And and um, and it's another check marks in the box for mm-hmm. me of like I love the first one. Yep. And I think I I really enjoy the second one because of the fact that it like expands upon it, mm-hmm. and there's so many cool things and in, in, in areas where it's able to expand. Again, we won't get into <laughs> yeah, it, but I, I really yeah. fell in love with it, and I loved right. 
Bandit Flower. Second one's good. But this one, man, <laughs> hits me right in my feelings. Oh, yeah. And I and I, I never cried at it, per se. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can understand where but, several people may cry. But w- let me go ahead and just pull back a phrase from a show. Mm-hmm. As I'm carrying a weight with yeah, me, yeah. it just feels Definitely. like it's it was weighing heavy on on my soul in a way. It's like and it's like yeah. it's just it's interesting <laughs> that you can watch something like that and then experience a breadth of emotions, mm-hmm. and then leave just like, man, how do you how do you cope with some of that right. stuff? Just thinking about it. What now? So instead of talking about these big hypotheticals like we're talking about here, let's get into some details. Oh yeah, we start off. With the Fetties. Yes. The Moore Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Survivors of uh, Side 4, which has been all but destroyed. Right. And I didn't know that initially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's even harder because a a lot of their... (laughs) The the Earth Federation is trying to... Stave off the invading Xeonic forces. Right. And there's like a whole... We're just on a war path. There's a whole sniper like squad. Right. The Living Dead division has been relegated to sniping operations. Right. Just holding territory from any Federation incursions that might happen. Right. And at the start of this movie, it feels like it's our first like real push mm-hmm. into the area. Oh yeah. That was taken from us. Mm-hmm. Or I'm saying us because I I'm <laughs> like looking I'm looking at it from the Earth right. Federation perspective. I mean that's how they start us off. Right. We uh we meet our boy, Ooh. our ensign, Ooh. EO Fleming. I like him. He's he's a bit of a he's he gets, a bit of a he's a bit of a stinker in this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, he gets better though. He gets better. He may, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I I liked him a lot better in Bandit Flower. Oh yeah, definitely. I really fell in love with his more um laid back demeanor. Mm-hmm. His more, I've seen some shit and I'm different now kind of right. attitude. Yeah, he he yeah he gets a lot better. He's a little cocky towards the beginning of of this of this first movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's he's a little hard to root for, and he right. feels like he's a little bit he's a little bit cocky. He's yeah, like, we know he likes jazz. Yeah, yeah, absolutely in love with free jazz. Yeah, and he also is a big fan of mobile suits. Oh yeah, he just which loves I can it. relate. Right. It's a big machine. It's hard to ignore. <laughs> Dude. And come on. Oh, buddy. His main deal is that um, he says himself that he's been possessed by uh, mobile suit combat. Oh, he, right, right, right. He, he, has, he has fully... Um, he's on a drug he just can't quit, and he's in a bad place right Right, now. right, right. <laughs> and again, like I've heard some things from people that have come back from war that have felt kind of the same way. It's like, I'm kind of addicted to the idea of like, you know, that kind of high stakes environment, oh, yeah. that kind of crazy fast paced environment and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm not going to describes gonna, it as the only way he can live and be free. Right. Which is awful. <laughs> I, oh yeah. Yeah. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Um, but given the circumstances, I mean, he doesn't have much choice. Right. And this is also a guy who has lost his family. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I hold yeah. on, we'll get there. That mm-hmm. oh yeah, I've yeah, just yeah. <laughs> I just started. You ever have those moments whenever, <laughs> whenever like you just you like you crack open a can and it just fizzes <laughs> right. up? Yeah. I feel like that was that for me. I just like, like oh shit, I, shit, I, shit, I, just, yeah, yeah, I just said something and I was like oh shit, oh shit, <laughs> shit, shit. Oh, man, I gotta slow right. down. Right. So, <laughs> um. So needless to say, uh, he like sorties a, out with a squadron of GMs, right, to try and regain some territory, and see what's I mean, going on. And oh, <laughs> these um, wounded warriors, these uh, what did you call them? The Living Dead Division, right? The Living Dead Division. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're good at what oh, they yeah. do. They're, I mean, they're popping off shots left mm-hmm. and right, and then taking I mean, them out like they're, they're nothing. Oh man, and it's brutal. Yeah. So, like, I mean, like at it, first, one guy gets hit by debris. Which, yeah, which gives like, away their oh, position, shit. and then they start dropping like flies. Right. He goes in the cockpit, jamming out, and he's like, "Who's gonna draw this short straw?" And then he immediately gets blown to pieces. <laughs> he he gets, survives, of course. Well, yeah, he but. gets the head, the head <laughs> blown off of his suit, and then of course mm-hmm. is able to like ev- evacuate beforehand. Yeah. Now, how about this GMs with a core block system? Interesting. That was initially reserved for Gundams only. Mm. Which is another thing I really like about this series is the variation 
all yeah. of these classic suits that you see. I love the fact that they have the they have the shields for these like mm-hmm. smaller like GM units. Oh yeah, like that kind of like they're more specialized, pack mounted. Yeah, like grabber and, arms. Like, <laughs> yeah, prehensile shields that you can just use. Right, which makes them feel more catered towards like this environment. Right, we're in debris. We're in mm-hmm. like the oh gosh the. <laughs> if you want us to be real, we're in like the debris of our homeland yeah. that is like just floating around in space. We're trying to like big ass graveyard, right? Exactly, and we're trying to make our way through it. Mm-hmm. Um, space lightning going off every oh which gosh, way. yeah, crazy. Um, so anyways, the Living Dead Division is actually really good at what they do. They're like, I mean, they're they're getting their target down almost all the way. Yeah, standard fare, right? What they're used to, and. One of the guys ends up like having like a like a cable issue, or yeah, whatever. Hoover, yeah, ends up opening his cockpit to like go check out the situation, and then of course EO, it's our boy EO, yeah, right. And he just like blasts that dude mm-hmm. right in the head, and yeah. it's like I and mean a bullet delivery. I mean, you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. So it's like, yeah. I mean, so you, I mean, you're like, oh shit, thirty that's minutes a little. or less too. So he got a tip in the form of a uh, Rick Dom, yeah, <laughs> right, <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly, like a like a high class one. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, there's like this altercation that happens where, um, Yo talks to the other pilots on the team. Right. Oh man! And like I said, he's he's real mean about. I mean, it he's too. yeah, he's real shitty. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like, uh, it's uh, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Even this shit is, talks. Oh, <laughs> uh, Daryl's taste in music. Oh my gosh! Cool, like love ballads and st- uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's like, this is what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. He's like, we're in a war scenario. Right. No reason to be nice to the other no, side. No, I, I mean, and again, you're also like taking one of their mobile suits to try and make it back home safe. Oh, yeah. So it's like, I can understand, like, you know, like I said, desperate times, mm-hmm. desperate measures. You got to do what you got to do. Right. Now, could he have asked the pilot to get out at gunpoint? Probably. But mm. he just... You know why? Yeah, you know why waste the time? Just you know, <laughs> by the time he's stalled enough, <sighs> the rest of his team's gonna get here and all that jazz, right? Literally, L- literally. So, yeah. But the 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 point that I'm making is mm-hmm. like this. I'm talking about by it being like real. It's like you have this guy who's like kind of cocky. He's mm-hmm. arrogant. He's gotten himself into this scenario yeah. where like you are behind enemy lines. He taking, knows why he's here, and you're taking he knows what he's gonna do. You're right, and you're taking like some of this very valuable, and you're gonna try and get back home safely, and you're also like kind of succeeding at it, and then you find out that like they're all kind of, uh, um, disabled in some way. Yeah, like and like then he makes fun of oh, them, and then it's like, man, you're being really shitty. Oh yeah, and this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> so you have this like Earth Federation, you have mm. these guys that like that may on the surface be perceived as what you'd imagine to be like good guys quote unquote or like right. or this kind of like this um this faction that you that like the movie if nothing else is starting you off following so you're right. like okay this is our kind of like quote unquote protag- uh, protagonist mm-hmm. we're supposed to follow yeah and then whenever he's like really shitty like this you're like like man, this guy sucks you're, <laughs> man, you're kind of being an asshole <laughs> for this <laughs> yeah. douchebag do i, do I want to be on this side right because again at this point uh, what is what is the the, the main man uh, for the Zeon? Daryl Lawrence. Daryl Lawrence. He kind of seems like a calm, collected guy. Right. Um, Just a guy who nonchalantly uh, snipes motherfuckers left and right. Right. While right. Listen to pop ballads. Right. And I think <laughs> I, I, at this point in time, is he kind of is he like a higher ranking official? Like, or is he like a chief of that squad? Or is it not yet? No, he's a uh, chief petty officer. Got it. Okay. So, um. Well, the point I'm trying to get across is like he has respect from his team members. Right. He doesn't have any legs, but he has both of his arms, right. and he is uh, he's doing he's doing what he can. Mm-hmm. And so, the movie kind of frames it in a way where you're like, man, it's really hard to kind of root for this EO guy. Yeah. And then you got this Daryl guy who's just kind of like, I mean, you know, he seems all right. He's not. Yeah. He's not. He's uh, not mean. He's not mean. He's, he's not nasty. You know, he's just kind of doing what he's got to do. He's yeah. in war. You know, it is what it is. Right. Um, and then there's this smug comment where he said, where EO says, um, whenever you hear jazz, that'll be my cue. Yeah. 
that's how you'll know I'm on the stage. And, right. And it's like, okay, okay. And I think he even says something like, that's how, like, that's, whenever you hear jazz, that's how you know you're going to die. It's like kind of like what he's like insinuating. Yeah. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to win. <laughs> you got to, you got to be <laughs> he's scared. building up this backstory. And it's oh, like, man. oh, dude. It's like, and so again, like you have this, like this machismo, this like arrogance. You're like, mm. oh man, like, wow, I, you seem like an all right dude, but like, man. <laughs> Right. All right. And so, as we had kind of touched on before, they like bring the body back. They have this whole situation. And, you know, uh, as the series moves along, you get to see a little bit more about these two like protagonists on either side between mm-hmm. EO and Daryl. Right. And I think it's really interesting. Yeah. I love how the movie is kind of like split between them. Mm-hmm. Like we're getting to see both sides. Yeah. And how like some, there's like some redeeming qualities for both sides. Right. And I kind of like that mm-hmm. because there, there are people around them that are kind of like good or bad or indifferent. Okay. Just people. Just people. In a Just bad people. situation. In a bad, bad situation. Yeah. And I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to remember like, what is some of the next like big, plot points that happens. I know we start to like, we get to trickle in a little bit to see how Daryl loses his legs. Right. The uh, Living Dead Division, the research team on there mm-hmm. is currently developing a system of operating mole suits with the use of amputee pilots. Right. It's called the, <laughs> uh, I think it was the uh, reuse psycho system. Yeah. Yeah. Now, as they keep losing more and more pilots, the uh, research starts to ramp up a bit. Oh, they start man. taking more drastic measures. Crazy. So far, they've been taking Daryl through different tests with his legs for the uh, soon-to-be-built Psycho Zaku, mm. which is one of my favorite versions of yeah. the Zaku 2. That thing is beautiful. It is really nice. And... While he's going through these tests, we see flashbacks of whenever he still had his legs, how he lost them. Yeah. And the difficulties that came with such a development. Now, Gosh, dude. <laughs> so heavy. Oh, yeah. The music, dude. It's oh, yeah. so good. And again, we have these two different uh, people that we're following. Mm-hmm. And each have Polar different... Polar opposites. Each have, like, different styles of music right. as well. So... Uh, whereas Daryl may be kind of more laid back and more soothing. He has these more like ballads of sorts, these kind of slower songs that are melodic and uh, like traditional kind of like music in a way. Mm -hmm. And then you have EO that has this kind of like free form, like all over the place, wacky jazz music that's just kind of super unique. And it's just, Mm -hmm. it's cool to see... It's cool to see like the different characters yeah. with like these different like touches the of like position. Right. I think that's super awesome. Yeah. And and I and I'll get into that more of that in a second with, <laughs> with EO. Yeah. But you get to see that during um I wanna say they're on the beach of some kind and a mm-hmm. bomb goes off and he he loses his legs. Yeah. And it's like a very catastrophic endeavor mm-hmm. and um what is the uh what is the the researcher's name? Uh, the professor Carla, Car- Carla, yeah, yeah, Carla, um, has kind of like been with Daryl this entire time. Like mm-hmm. she was the one who kind of like helped him with his with losing his legs, yeah, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I don't think it happens around the same time in the film, but I'm gonna go ahead and just juxtapose it here while we're talking about mm-hmm. it. There are some sequences with Eo as soon as he gets back to the ship with the Rick Dom, right their ship receives a new shipment of supplies. Yeah. Which just so happens to include a full-armored Gundam. Ooh, buddy. What a beautiful unit. It is a monster. And as soon as EO gets his hands on it, it feels like one. Mm Mm-hmm. I love how they portray this thing. I mean, yes. Before we get quite into that, Mm -hmm. there's a moment when there's a, a... a different sounding song mm-hmm. that comes across oh, yeah. that comes across on EO's um 
His little Walkman. His little Walkman he has. And it just so happens to be a pop ballad. Oh man. And it and it and it, it it's different for the character. Mm-hmm. So it's not part of his like normal like repertoire of music. Yeah. He doesn't and, like it. And well, well, but the, the the way the song starts, like it starts the song, and we're hearing it. It's like, oh, it's kind of weird, and like, or just, it, it, I'm sorry, you don't really think about it until you see that it's like in reference to Eo as a younger child, yeah. and you're like, oh, that's kind of weird. And then as the song progresses, and it kind of has this like somber tone, it then like pans over to like this um, hand holding a gun and this like executive these desk, splatter marks, and it's his father who has killed himself, and yeah. it's like. Oof. Yeah. Oh, shit. Straight to the gut. And then, of course, like, his buddy, um, uh, I forgot his name. He's got a really, like, unique name. Uh, Cornelius. Cornelius. What a, like I told you. Yeah. What a name. Cornelius, like, kind of chimes in and is like, hey, bud, like, you, you all right? And he's like, oh, Isn't what? that the song your dad liked? Yeah, and he's like, freaking get that shit out of here. Sappy Just crap. Sappy crap. And it's like, oh. Yeah. <sighs> Ruined an entire genre of music for the poor boy, and it's like, not you're right, yeah. but but not even that for me. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's moments like that that I'm like, I see why you're a shitty person now, mm-hmm. and, and a little bit, yeah, maybe not totally, and it's not justifying your your awful actions, right, of course not, but it's like, I get, I see where you're coming from yeah. now. The breadcrumbs are uh, you are a troubled, themselves. you are a troubled individual. And and it come to find out later that his father was a high ranking officer. Oh yeah, the leader of side four. And it's like, ah, why, why, yeah, oof, mm-hmm. like that is that's heavy. Yeah, to be like your father is in some like is in some position of power and then kills himself and yeah. then like you then try to become some sort of Gundam pilot to cope with. Yeah, all that kind of stuff, and then to compound on top of that, losing side four, yep. which is not shown, but we can only imagine like the trauma that that oh, must, yeah. you know, that that must like everyone on this ship is homeless now, uh, and 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 then to make matters worse, like this young man here <laughs> is like is getting this rush from being in the battlefield. Probably to cope with the fact that he hasn't really had to deal with the emotions of lo- losing his his home world mm-hmm. slash his father, like, yeah. it, it, and then like walking in on that. It's if, like if his friends weren't on the ship with him, right, right. he'd be a psychopath. And so the like thi- full on, full on. And so the fact that you're like, oh, you're just kind of a shitty young dude. It's Shit, like that would have been another title for this episode. What's that? Full armor psychopath. Full armor psychopath. Yeah. Wow, there you go. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like it starts to open up that like you're you are a complex character because of a lot of things that happened oh, yeah. to you, and then the same thing happens, but in a different way for Daryl mm-hmm. is like there you have been through some shit, you have seen some things, yeah, and and I would and I would wager a lot more happens to him in the progression of this movie mm-hmm. that like really develops him into who he is yeah and it just is it's like a it's really interesting to see this like these two different positions like we've mm-hmm. like I've said already at the, the top of this their conversations are my favorite oh, oh man <laughs> I love that yo know, just keeps coming back at him with peg legs mm-hmm like zoo. man it's just so cutting it's so mean yeah um uh, yeah, I just thought it was something really mean, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I was going to say, he says, like, oh, yeah, you peg legs me. Like, oh, yeah, like no dad had to have oh a head ass. Fucking <laughs> orphan. <laughs> Where's your, go, why'd you go home? Oh, wait, sorry, we blew it up. <laughs> <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> Bitch ass. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> that's the first thing that came to my mind. Oh, I was like, that's a little man. mean. Yeah. Anyways, so, um. But like you're saying, this this new full armor Gundam comes in, and it's mm-hmm. like it is the turning of the tide. Oh yeah, Eo gets a hold of it, and it's oh, it's all gone from it, there. It is like it's like you said, they portrayed it perfectly. Mm-hmm. I looked at it as we're talking about a man that loves what he does, mm-hmm. and that is like being in a Gundam and and feeling that feeling of like being free and open in space, and oh, being yeah. able to fly and like just do whatever. Right. And I'm like. 
up until it's like oh this is like up to the <laughs> this is a king yeah. size candy bar for you. right up to like the killing part mm-hmm. i'm totally behind i can understand like like if you are possibly from a like from side 4 mm-hmm. used to fly planes right and it's like it's probably where it stems from you're right and it's like that is uh uh, that is a, a noble thing to like to feel like mm-hmm. alive and free at. If like that is something that you've like okay. really, and, and then if there's even some sort of like emotional implication that we don't know about from like his past, besides just like you know being a pilot of some kind. Yeah. Um. But but that's the thing is that he gets into the the full on regundum and he starts putting it through its paces. I mean, and he's just in full throttle. And again, and I think you you put it very well whenever we were watching the movie. Mm-hmm. You were like, it's like he's in a brand new car. Oh, yeah. And I was like, you're right. It's as if he went from like a GM, like yeah. just like a normal a station wagon, a little, I mean, like a little sedan, mm-hmm. a little four door guy. And then he got upgraded to like a sports car. Oh, it's yeah. like, I mean, come on. Dude. I can only imagine him being like, I mean, just flooring it. It's a field day. It's a field day. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay. And then not only that, he gets to really, it's got firepower to oh, yeah. back it up. And it's like, okay. He's destroyed like an entire building with that right. main cannon he's yeah. got. That's like a battleship cannon. Exactly. And so he gets closer to where these snipers are. Mm-hmm. And this is the first chance where he's like, I can finally get some payback for, right. for he's them. He's been taking out like Zaku's here and there, different sniping teams. Mm-hmm. And the best shot, one of the best shots mm-hmm. in this whole film oh, is the gosh. POV Zaku. That, that's crazy it's nuts i yeah. wish they would do that shit more it was kind of wacky and kind of cool yeah terrifying they even. they made the they made the the zaku feel like it was like a regular uh, like um <laughs> like 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 dylan was saying a pov shot almost yeah. like it was like a suit of armor and you're mm-hmm. looking out of like the main so you're like you're, you're seeing your a first body. person shooter you're right right you're seeing like your arms and legs as like a zaku and then of mm-hmm. course like you're not able to like to get your stability and this gun is like flying, and oh, I mean, yeah. it's just like cutting Taking off your your arms out left and right, melting the whole top of your gun off. Oh yeah, coming through and chopping your leg off and the stuff. Jazz and it's like, fading yeah, in and out. Like, yeah, and it's like, oh man, crazy, horrific. Looking. And and so and and it almost feels, yes, he has kind of been a shitty person, mm. but it's also like he lost almost his whole team. Oh yeah. So the fact that he's like really kind of laying into them is like. Again, I'm not going to say it's the right thing to do, right. but it almost feels a little justified because you're like, okay, like, I mean... It, right, it's it, just they're taking turns. You're, you're right. I mean, this again, we're talking about war here, mm-hmm. so it's like, I mean, yeah, none of it's good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but man, is it yeah, fucking crazy. Man, I mean, he is good at it. Mm-hmm. And then he ends up... He, what f- he goes up against Daryl's team. Right. They narrow down his position, and they lure him in. Right. Now, this goes about as well as you'd expect. Right. EO gets the jump on them. He gets grazed, and then he knows where they are, or at least has a rough idea. That was a beautiful shot. He taking them out one by one. He, like, he deflects one of the sniper bolts, like, off of one of his shields. And then he's out. And then, when it's like, and that, that's the thing, is whenever it, whenever it hits, it, like, it curves around it, and it could just, and it is this beautiful display of, like, color and stuff. Oh, you're it's, talking about the lightning bolt. I was like, whenever he got shot. I thought he got shot and he'd deflect one of the lightning bolts off of his like shield or whatever. Oh, no, no, no. That's uh, like mid-fight. I'm talking like at the beginning. Okay. Like one of the snipers sees him, takes a shot, grazes shield, and then he moves in. Yeah. Yeah. He takes out Sean. Yes. Oh. <laughs> uses him as a shield. <sighs> and uh, Oh, my God, dude. Mm-hmm. It's so... Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oof, this is heavy. They end up, they thought that Sean was out of, like, was dead, out of commission. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come to find out, he just doesn't have his full mobility of his suit, and he's like, he was able to communicate and, like, get some communications through to them. Right. And they're like, oh, wait, Sean's not dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and then EO grabs his suit, and because at this point, he's being shot at, and he's oh, like, yeah. he, I, he got grazed. Mm-hmm. So now he's, like, holding on to... They're a live companion. Yeah. Take a shot if yeah, you can. Right, right. And then, of course... Can't promise your buddy will make it through. <sighs> and then there are moments like this, and we'll touch on this later, I think, mm. some more. There are moments like this 
in this movie a couple of times, and this is the first instance of it, I feel like, Sean, we have seen, um, we've seen his character a couple times now, mm-hmm. yeah. and and he just screams like, just shoot him! <laughs> right, take like, him just out. Just take him out, kill him, or whatever, mm-hmm. and it's like, and it, it just comes from this like level of desperation of like, just do what you gotta do. Oh yeah. And Forget about for, me. And it's like, oh man, <laughs> that's so heavy. Right. And then I want to say that doesn't he like push him forward? Yeah, he he takes one of his like supplementary th- thrusters. Yeah. And just shoves it into his back, sending him flying. And then he pops a missile at it and he explodes. Damn. It's like and he's gone. And then of course his whole team is then like traumatized. Oh, and it's yeah. like they're panicking at this point. That's one of those moments for EO's character that it's like, man, you you really <clears throat> are stacking the deck against you mm-hmm. in not a good way. Oh, yeah. So after he, oh, I forget what the other dude's name was. I don't remember either. <clears throat> but uh, he's piloting a Rick Dom. Yeah. And he's trying frantically to kill this Gundam. Who is just outmaneuvering every single shot they oh, take. Oh, I mean, yeah. Now, he uses one of his thrusters as a decoy, blows it up, which is a nice trick that we have see yeah. uh, multiple times in, like, future series. And he ends up behind his, like, sniping spot. And, man, this shot is one of my favorites. Oh. You see the full <laughs> force and impact of this main gun that he's been toting around. Yeah. <laughs> He's just barely able to like clear the blast zone, but yeah. you see like the heat from the ray itself is like scorching the paint off of this thing. Yeah. So he, of course he ends up slicing his legs off, leaving him like helpless in space. Yeah. Damn, dude. Mm-hmm. After That's... which he's maneuvering to find Daryl, but at this point he's lined up a shot after he tries to finish the dom off, mm-hmm. and that's when it happens. Oh, okay, yes, that's what it, that's that's the moment I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. They don't call it the Thunderbolt sector for no reason. Yeah. Now, Daryl has a perfect shot on this guy. If that lightning strike did not happen, he would have got him. But uh, EO just has apparently a very good streak of luck and is able to somehow miraculously survive this. That is crazy. Mm-hmm. After... This whole interaction, he ends up, the 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 conclusion of this battle ends with uh, EO, like, shoving his beam saber into, like, the cockpit mm-hmm. of, uh... Daryl Zaku one. Right, right. And what is the, is it like a flashbang he had in his hand? It's uh, what they call a cracker grenade. A cracker grenade. And yeah. it basically, <laughs> it basically, like we see some blood in the cockpit. And you're like, oh my gosh, what happened? To he lost it? another arm. Oh man, we get to see like some blood, and you're like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen to him? Right. And then he lets go of this, like basically, this flashbang. And um, the next shot that you see of the Gundam is one of my favorites. Oh yeah, it looks so cool. He's just standing there, and like it, it literally looked like it melted the paint off of it. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it, it, oh, yeah. it's rough looking. Super cool, really cool shot. Oh yeah. Um, and then we, like this is what I'm talking about by Daryl's character feeling like it. It's changing. His character is growing as the movie is progressing. I feel like mm-hmm. because this is one of those scenes that I'm talking about where we really get to see some more of his character and how he's like running on the beach. Like, you get to see this kind of, like, freedom that he had that has been, like, taken from him because mm-hmm. of war. And then he has this, like, this very vulnerable moment where he uh, where he's lost his, his left arm. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, and we've already heard him, like, oh, I guess we didn't, we didn't hear him. I think music was playing over it. Yeah. We saw that he was panicking when he lost his legs. Mm-hmm. And this is the first time we're, like, like, he has this, I mean, this, guttural scream of oh, like yeah. after like losing his arm and like, like coming to mm-hmm. and it's like ugh, it just it hurts because you're yeah. like I 
how what, do, what do you do? How much at more that point? can you lose? Is what it mm-hmm. feels like, and it's so. I'd have been done. So tra- it's so traumatizing. Mm-hmm. And 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 then to make matters, I guess, better yeah. and worse in a lot of ways. The, Clara uh, is like there by his side as well, like you know, or you know, uh, with him mm-hmm. in that moment. Ugh, dude. Yeah. And these next few moments after this is what is really hard to watch. Yeah. The uh, the remnants of the Xeon fleets uh, in the Thunderbolt sector have received orders to defend it to the death. Right. <laughs> so, the uh, one of the scientists gets a little desperate and uh, decides to further their research on the use of uh yeah, reuse psycho device. Yeah. Yeah. The way the psycho Zaku is uh, situated now for some reason is that it requires a quadruple amputee in order mm. to reach its full potential. And they don't they don't ever they don't elaborate on that, like why it has yeah. to be you have to sacrifice so much for it to work. Yeah. I'm assuming it just it's just because it hooks up to the pilot's body directly. Mm, I see. You're able to have more control. At least is what my guess is. Right. But uh, they unfortunately picked Daryl to uh, be the final and test they, subject. And they, they do this out of like a, like Dylan was saying, is that is that scientist like the head scientist? He's, or, or is he like a head over anything? He's he? one of the um, one of the heads of the research team okay. for that specific system. This guy, he's the, he's the kind of shitty one that I was talking about initially. Oh, yeah. You can tell that after getting the news, they they have to like go down with the ship. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you can tell he's not happy with it. Oh yeah, he doesn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not gonna say I don't blame him. He's a researcher. He's not really a fighter. Like I don't, right. I understand. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is where like he starts to get frantic and he tries to push Clara to like to do something that she's not quite comfortable with. Oh yeah, no. She's Don't already enough of this. She's already seen it. She's seen a lot. Mm-hmm. She was she was very fond of Hoover, Hoover who was shot in the head. So yep. like seeing that was um, hard for her, and <clears throat> you can tell that she's the compassionate one out of the researchers. Right. Um, <clears throat> and uh, still sees her patients as people. Yes, uh, whereas the other guy really looks at them as lab rats means to an end right um and in this moment she somehow gets conned into right. following through because again that's i think it's i, I don't want to let me f- rephrase that mm. because there is the full armor gundam like they do need a fighting chance right the, the only psycho f- zaku is one of the only things that can put up a decent fight against the right thing. Right, and so like it's kind of your your only hope. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I mean, you can go without it, but then we're all going to kind of die here, oh, yeah. and like so, it's you've got no chance, basically. And so it's a hard decision to make. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to be mean and say she got like conned into it because like right. I understand where I understand both. Couldn't sides. have done much else. Exactly. So she ends up. Um. Oh man, it's heavy. They She's get the a, captain to walk up to Daryl. Yes, and kind of phrase and this as ask him to give them his right arm uh, so that he can pilot this machine. I don't even. And he agrees. I don't even know. The captain kind of phrases it as an opportunity to like serve, right? Your homeland mm-hmm. to basically serve. The Xeon. Going above and beyond. Going above and beyond your act of service and just give up your arm and you, you're a hero. Yes. And and you could turn the tide of this battle and save all of us. Right. I'm not even upset that he took it. I'm just how did we get here? <laughs> right. Is the question I ask. Is I like there are so many things. Mm-hmm. And the and and to add insult to injury, to really kick a man while he's down. You come to this conclusion and you ask this man this question yep. after he has just lost his arm in battle. Oh, yeah. And you're 
I don't. I can't even comprehend the hey, audio. Hey, you want that. us to just you know snip off the other one? I even you out. Can't even imagine the audacity of somebody. <laughs> if I lo- if I already had given you my legs in combat, and I'm trying my best to make it make do. Yeah. And then I just you ought, you ought to consider yourself lucky I came back yes. at all. I just sacrificed my left arm in in this war scenario, mm-hmm. and you have the gall to come just mosey up here while I'm still in recovery, yep. and just politely ask me to give up my other arm. <laughs> right? Who the frick do you think you are? I mean, buddy? really? I'm like, man, I don't even know. I, I, you might as well just kill me now. I it's I don't even know like the complexity of what must go on in a person's head. Right. Needless to say, he accepts it, and of course he goes. I'm under, sure somewhere in there, the phrase "What have I got to lose?" was floating around. Prob- I mean, you're probably right at this point. Oh well. Yeah, it's just an arm. Right. <laughs> um, I got another one. Just wait. Mm, <laughs> damn, dude. <laughs> He goes under, and and man, as oh yeah, if, they don't pull any punches with this scene. Either. As if Clara, uh, Clara, Carla, Carla, sorry, as if Carla hasn't been through enough. <laughs> she's the one that has to perform this surgery, yep. and it's like, oh man. And then there's it cuts to our boy waking up, and he like gets to really take it all in for the first mm-hmm. time, and it's like. Man, that is this is heavy. Yeah, they really camp on it in a good way. It's mm-hmm. good to just like sit here for a second oh, and go, yeah. "This is uncomfortable and hard to watch." Yeah, and then of course he wakes up and turns over, and there in the corner is Carla, bawling her eyes. Out. I mean, just trying to keep it together, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, damn, it sucks. It sucks hard. Mm-hmm. Needless to say, he gets control over. The um is it the psycho zaku? Yes. He they gets waste c- no time plugging no. him in. I mean, no. I mean at this point I you've sacrificed all of it. Oh, I yeah. may as well just go ahead and beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> we gotta this. send him out hey, now. Yeah, let's go ahead and just do this. Yeah. I'm already here. Mm-hmm. Um takes it in stride. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um and and this is and it uh it's hard in a whole new way for me to watch this next portion because he really he really opens it up. Mm-hmm. Taking out ships left and right. And he gets this look of excitement on his face. <laughs> yeah. This look of freedom. Mm-hmm. For the first time in this film, he seems like he is, I mean, elated. Yeah. And it's similar to uh, another pilot we've seen. Yes. But the phrase that, that really hurts my heart is that he proceeds to say, it was almost worth giving up my other arm yeah. for this experience. Right. And I was like, oh. <laughs> wow. Yep. It's like, uh, it's hard to say, like, it's hard to quantify that feeling mm-hmm. of like, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say you should have done it. Right. You can give up your arm if you want to, to have the ability to fly through space effortlessly and be able to live your life. Right. Who am I to say you can't have that experience? <laughs> yeah. But man, is it, is is it, it hard to... Is it worth is it? Is it worth it? I mean, that's a that's hard to... Yeah. It's hard to really put that on paper. But anyways, like I said, it's hard to put that feeling that I'm, that I'm experiencing <laughs> right now, that kind of... Eh, yeah. It's hard to put that in words for me right now. Like, I don't... Anyways. Yeah. Um, so, as we're continuing... At this point, <laughs> EO has received reinforcements. <sighs> By way of This is uh, what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about right here. That uh, kind of that uh, <laughs> it, it's almost it just like it keeps getting it, worse. It almost as if like it just keeps getting worse. His reinforcements come in plenty of mobile suits. Plenty of mobile suits. Now, the real kicker is uh when we see who's piloting them. <sighs> It's a bunch of children. Yeah. It's just a bunch of children. What look to be elementary school kids. <laughs> I just want you to I just want you to slit that sink in for a second. Yeah. 
he's standing there as like a grown ass man, and he's like, "Well, like younger uh, than Amuro, whenever he stumbled into the cockpit." And it's like, I what are they thinking? I don't understand. Who made this call? How did they get the parents to agree to this? How? They probably didn't. I. It's like. <laughs> you wrote that in there just. Yeah. Just despite. That's me. just. Yeah. That's low. Mm-hmm. But at that point, like, I mean, so as that fight sequence plays out, these kids are inexperienced. Oh, yeah. They don't have any battle. The starry eyed. I even. mean, they don't have anything. Mm hmm. And EO gives it to him straight. Like. <laughs> I don't need. I, uh, <laughs> if you survive, I'm by. <laughs> what did he say before that? He basically line. he basically said something along the lines uh, of. Farewell, my expendable brothers and sisters. Uh. <laughs> yeah. You don't mean shit. You were here to shore up defenses and you're <sighs> probably not going to live through this. But hey, he, if you do, drinks are on me. I don't. Two children. How? <laughs> Just doesn't care. Not even him. I don't blame him. Oh, he yeah. didn't ask to get put in that position. Uh, I don't blame him. I'm talking about the greater why here. Mm-hmm. The, like, how do we get to this point where we're just like, yeah, we're going to do that now. Yeah. Child soldiers. Yeah. Count us in. We Amaro did great. Oh, yeah. So why not Let's all of the them? the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> And Eo's it's the most shit take the, uh, I've ever yes. heard of. The thing is, Eo is just sitting there, and I mean, like he's now he's kind of fallen into power because everyone yeah. else that was above him got killed. He's just like, is this some kind of fucking joke? Yeah, I mean, and I would say the same exact thing. <laughs> right. I would be sitting there, and and and, and in the, and I, I'm not a. I don't think I'm a very shitty person at all. But I mm. feel like I would sit there and go, well, farewell, my yeah. expendable brothers and sisters. Sorry you know what? about it. <laughs> you just got Delta shit hand. If anybody survives, I'll buy you chocolate milk. <laughs> right. Oh, gosh, dude. Mm-hmm. Anyways, the fight goes swimmingly. Oh, yeah. There's just... They're taken out left and right. I mean... Effortlessly. These children don't make it. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm not a majority no. of them at all. No. It's hard to watch because I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, my God, dude, this is crazy. Yeah. Um... It's like they they bring to surface every uncomfortable factor of war. Oh yeah, they really nail that. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I I don't, I don't think it's in this fight sequence, or is it the is it the is it the first time that Eo's in the full armor where he's like, Gundam, give me your strength. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's like yeah, flying the, through uh, space. Right, whenever he's taking it for a spin. I mean, he just, I mean, you want to talk about being possessed by a Gundam. This, oh, yeah. this boy he, just, he's flying through space he goes, and he's like, just he, give yeah. me your power. <laughs> yeah. Lend me your This aid. hand of mine glows with yeah. lots of power. <laughs> oh, man. It's insane. To wrap this up, the fight sequence at the very end it's is so, so good. It's so good. There's so much action. They it both mirrors, give it their all. And I mean, and they really push themselves mm-hmm. to the end. Oh yeah, many instances of like insane luck. Oh yeah, are put on display. At one point, after Daryl knocks Eo into like a building or what's left of one, Eo, he's able to like narrowly avoid this beam shot, and he loses one of his guns and gets stuck in a wall. Now, Eo has a shot lined up; he's about to take him out. Yeah. And then a piece of debris just falls on Daryl and takes him out, <laughs> out <laughs> yeah. of the way. Wow. And, man, it's such a good fight. Like, the momentum, the the speed. Oh, yeah, the These sheer speed. super fast. There's, and, there, and, like, the the um, the immense arsenal of weaponry mm-hmm. at their disposals oh, yeah. that are both unique in their own regard because, like, the full armor has so many laser weapons mm-hmm. and so many, like... It's got, like, two beam rifles... Two missile launchers, a bunch of missile launchers built into the body. Right. It's, it's, my, it's a descendant or ancestor of heavy arms, you yeah. think. It's, it's got a whole bunch. It's just missing it. the Gatling guns. And then the Psycho Zaku has so many, mm-hmm. I mean, so many bazookas and it's rockets. Got four bazookas, and, I mean, two machine guns. Crazy. 
ridiculous. And I and I love it. And like mm-hmm. like he was saying, there's so many like it, it feels that fight sequence feels like it is the two the 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 two masters of war mm-hmm. at work. Like oh, there yeah. are these two people that are like at good at what they do. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like seeing like you have this war being waged around you and then you have like the two the the aces yeah the aces uh, that are like you know head to head and it's like and it feels like that because they're just so talented and all that kind oh, of yeah. stuff now at first I had uh, interpreted it like they're both just taking turns right Yo has his fun with the full armor and then Daryl comes in with the psycho Zaku and he actually starts like winning. Right. Like, Eo starts slipping up or just being put at a disadvantage, like, right. left and right. <laughs> he loses half of the Gundam's face in, like, a missile blast. hmm And after he, like, gets his bearings again. And he it, it, it still feels like a pride thing to him. Oh, yeah, definitely. He still doesn't want to lose to a, a basically a paraplegic. Right. Uh, now, uh, <laughs> quadrant. Oh yeah, right, right. Yeah, no limbs whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So of course, a lot is on the line for him specifically, as far as like matters of ego go. Right. Now, once they are finally like coming to blows for the final go, uh, Daryl loses an arm. Like he starts venting. Uh, fumes and sp- yeah, like right, right, right. spitting out of control lands in the colony. Uh, Eo, <laughs> he uh, ditches like most of his armor, loses his only shield at mm-hmm. this point, and is just like drift right yeah. now. After which the remainder of the Federation mm-hmm. flagship that was leading the fleet, which has been destroyed, mm-hmm is now on its way to the Xeon flagship to try and take it over. Yeah. Because they're running out of oxygen and, and they need to find somewhere, like, quick. Oh, man. That boarding sequence is awful. You've got a bunch <sighs> of... You've got, like, the remainder of the onboard combat team and the mechanics. Yeah. Like, coming at these people with guns. It just... Yeah, it feels like It's you, a mess. Yeah. It feels like you have people that are coming together um it almost feels like the it gives me the same feeling of like of raiders are coming in <laughs> to to pillage the women and children right that same sort of vibe of like you're going into a area that like they're trying to like bunker down in mm-hmm. and they're all like injured they're all just trying to like Oh yeah, they're all just trying to find some sort of safe haven after they've like, accepted their fate, right? And then of course you come in there with guns, just trying to like, who's your commanding officer? And no one's <laughs> speaking up because like nope. they know they're gonna blow up the ship anyway, right? Might as well take these losers with us. Yes, it's crazy, dude. <laughs> yeah, there's so, a. <sighs> let's talk about that scene. What with happens the, with the beam saber? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> our uh, our boy Cornelius, mm-hmm. out of like a last ditch effort, he, he, it really Comes feels upon like upon Carla and what I'm assuming is the remainder of the uh, officers and or science team that she was a part of, right? Planning to detonate this explosive device to take out the ship, right? <laughs> now, as you were saying, our boy Cornelius. Tries to appeal to their better nature. Yes, he comes in there. He comes in there with no weapon. Right, and he comes hands throws up. it aside. He he has hands up, and he says, "Like, why do we have to keep fighting?" He comes at this the right way, the way you should. Right in a situation like this, and I don't Little think does he know. <laughs> I don't think he. I don't think he did this with ill intent. Oh no, no, he fully believed in what he was saying, and he was like, he's really trying to appeal to them and be like. If we just keep fighting like this, it's just going to keep... Mm-hmm. We're all going to die. We're all going to die. We need to like come together and find some sort of common ground or mm-hmm. something. He take this, takes a real diplomatic approach, yeah. and it's really commendable. Mm-hmm. But then one of his... One of his uh, little buddies one of his, uh, beside him <laughs> providing security uh, sticks a little camera up on the ceiling. 
pointing it towards the uh, the scientists and Carla. And is able to transmit, I'm guessing, some sort of location mm-hmm. towards where this detonator is. Right. And Carla is wise to what's going on. And, and so she's she, like, what are you doing with that? Right. And she tries to run towards them. And then as she does, there's this, oh, mm-hmm. this bright pink beam that oh, just, yeah. I mean, just fades through almost like a, almost like a rain of pink light just comes down, yeah. melting through the metal and just evaporated, evaporates them. Yeah. Gone. And just like that. She and then Carla turns around and it's just like and that breaks her. She's broken at mm-hmm. that point. And then she gets sucked <laughs> out as he turns off the beam saber. She gets like sucked out into space. Mm-hmm. And then of course Cornelius is like, "What? What the what, fuck? What was did you that? Just, what did you just do?" And then of course everyone's like, "Yeah, you got him, Cornelius. Way to go!" And he's like, "What the? F- what am I? <laughs> what am I a part of, dude?" Yeah. And it's like, and then all out war breaks out. <sighs> It is so, like I said, that is that moment that I'm talking about where I'm like, how, how do you, how do you accurately paint with words what all just happened there? <laughs> you have a woman that just watched the last of her, like her, the, they, she was going to be part of a suicide mission mm-hmm. to help end all this. And she got to watch all of her friends get killed after being put in some really weird scenarios and her mind breaks and she is now hysterical. She's crying, she's freaking out, and she's gone numb. Oh, yeah. You have Cornelius that is just trying his best to be a good person for everyone in this scenario and trying to say, like, hey, let's all just take a step take, ste- take a step notch. back and let's all just talk this through like yeah. uh, civilized adults. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't want to die. I'm pretty sure you don't want to either. And even after all that, he's getting praised for something that he didn't even do <laughs> intentionally. And it's like, I, what, in, what is going yeah. on here? Like you're saying, all out war breaks out. War crimes. War crimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's crazy. They all end yeah. up getting um, captured. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, taken in. Yeah. This is this is the end of the, of the movie. And then, of course, the start of Bandit Flower, basically. Yeah. Which is really unique. Oh, we got to talk about <laughs> the final shots. Between the Psycho Zaku and the Gundam. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, a yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a point whenever at the very, very That's end. One of my favorite shots in the whole movie. I love that scene. Which one are you talking about? Because I was talking about the fact that like whenever like he he melts through the whole with his beam saber, he melts through the helmet of the Psycho Zaku, and then of course the Psycho Zaku blasts oh, yeah, like a rocket, f- like r- and just rips his whole head off. Yeah, Daryl is lying motionless. Yes, in the wreck of this colony, Psycho Zaku is like down for the count. Right, and Eo still has. A handy little beam saber and yeah. a shield, and is currently plummeting towards. I him. mean, f- a full speed ahead. Oh yeah, ready to end this. Yeah. Now, as if in an act of providence, mm-hmm. another lightning bolt ends up going throughout the entire colony, all the way towards Daryl Zaku. Right. Which reinitializes the whole thing. Yeah. And man, the sound design, it's beautiful, and just the animation of that scene is. Perfect. Yeah. Like the moment that the uh, Sturm Faust like hits the Gundam's head is <laughs> my favorite. Yeah. Crazy. Just that real weighty metal crunch. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just shit getting broken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And at this point, Eo only hits the Zaku's head. Right. He's freaking out like, why the fuck can't I beat this yeah, loser? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite bit is... um the face-to-face chat that they have oh, on yeah. the ship. That's hard. And EO just lays it out plain. I mean... And Daryl believes him. It's, oh, because he, he knows he's right. What did, what, did he, what did he elaborate on again in that moment? I was the nature of mm-hmm. war and how they've both been playing to its tune. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, you're right. Like, Daryl comes up. It's like, well, well, well. And he's like, don't fucking pull that shit with me. Mm-hmm. You're no better. Yeah, <laughs> offering up your body parts to pilot that awful machine. Damn, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no getting out of this one, punk. It really feels like the comeuppance for EO in a way. Oh yeah, really kind of knocking that guy down a peg. Mm-hmm. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> right, really right. just knocking him down a little bit. Just going like, hey, don't you, don't you, <laughs> don't pretend. you fucking lie to me. Don't you pretend like you're better than I am. Mm-hmm. 
when we're both just as shitty as one another. Oh yeah. Gosh, dude, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. What a. <sighs> yeah, I love these. What two. a train wreck! <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah. What a I what a an absolute typhoon of emotions. Mm-hmm. Needless Shit to say, sucks, bro. And then, and then, dude, what makes me so sad is after it's all said and done, because of what little bit that I know about Bandit Flower, mm-hmm. we know that uh, Clara, Carla, Carla. Carla. I don't like. I think I'll say Clara, <laughs> Carla, Carla. Like her mind is kind of broken. Mm-hmm. She's lost. She like kind of. Um, uh, what is it called? Whenever like you repress or, no, or you like you go, she basically like goes back to her like childhood. Right. And she is like, her mind is broken and she's not really like coherent. Mm-hmm. Um, regress. She like regresses inwards. Yeah. Um, so knowing that from the future and then seeing at the very end, whenever she's back and she's like kind of giggling mm-hmm. and like kind of, crying and like <laughs> is not really there yeah and daryl's just holding her and like trying to like console her and be there for her mm-hmm. and i think he really does have some like feelings for her in oh, a yeah. way and knowing that like she's not there mm-hmm. it really felt like zeta oh yeah it really had that <laughs> yeah, it, not quite as heavy and not quite as like like right in your Darryl face lawrence is the fa yuri of <sighs> thunderbolt <laughs> Oh, Again, for those of you who may not have listened to it, there's a point in time at the end where the protagonist, like he, his mind, is broken at the very end, suffers a psychic attack, right? And uh, and his his uh, I don't want to say is. I don't want to say girlfriend. I guess it is girlfriend. Yeah, his girlfriend. His girlfriend basically has to like come it, to terms with the fact that he's and, and she's the one that discovers him like that, and it's like, yeah, oh, that's heavy, it's awful, that's hard. Mm-hmm. And then, um. So, so this scenario feels an awful lot like that as well, yeah. where um, he is just holding her and consoling her. And it's like, man, she's not going to be the same, yep. and that's hard. <laughs> you sacrificed yeah. so much, and you've got you've done so many things. Yeah. It may feel like you've won, but you've never, you haven't really. This is just the start of a whole the new thing. victory. This is you just could ever have gotten. This is literally just the stepping stone to what's about to happen, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh man. <laughs> They get retracted by a, another fleet. And they're like, hey, kids, you want to go to a bow coup? <laughs> like, no. No, please. <laughs> <laughs> I know what's there. Yeah, I know what's going to happen to me there. Ugh. I've seen the future. Oh, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> sorry that this one was so, so emotionally good. charged. But you know what? At the same time, it I needed this tonight. It was good. I needed to just really just feel all these feelings and just get it all out. Because, mm-hmm. man, that was yeah, that was great. Um, if you're looking to uh, find out other places where you can listen to us or where you can get in touch with us, we have a link tree forward slash Ian Wolf where you can, uh, like I just said before, you can find all the podcasting platforms or the social media that we have. Yeah. Um, or I believe you can also uh, cut off all your limbs and then plug them all into a a contraption and, mm-hmm. uh, and we'll just download the yes. podcast right in your bloodstream. Straight to the mind. Straight to the mind. <laughs> if you go back to your homeland in space, we're also somewhere amongst the rubble and thunderbolts. Yeah, there. we'll be there. We'll be there. Yeah, we'll, we'll ju- we just took like a table from the debris. You know how it is. Got the whole setup on there. That's all we need. There's an empty building in there somewhere. I think it has a whole file cabinet full of yeah. the air. Podcast. Who needs it? You know, who needs it? <laughs> Not in space. Nah. But anyways, until next week, thank you so much for listening. Yeah, see you. Bye-bye. <laughs>